So you remember I said this is where we begin. This is just the statement, the expansion out of like that distance is these two points, that distance is this perpendicular one. I see that I've got an E divided by this E, right? Or it's, it's actually the absolute value of E, but E is a ratio, it's a positive number. So that's why I can cancel those, thumbs up. And then when you've got this zero y disappearing, you can see this is enormous symmetry here that's going to enable me to factorize a whole lot when I get down, okay? Now, after I square both sides, what ends up happening is you have to collect some like terms. The important thing is, have a look at what I've got here, okay? How did I know to get to this out of my, like you end up getting a mess of terms in these couple of intervening lines. The reason why is because I'm aiming at this. I'm aiming at an x squared and a y squared separated out, so that's why I get x squared and y squared, I factorize in those terms. Luckily for me, there's only a single y squared. And then I have this. Now I only need one more step to get to what I'm supposed to be, right? I need to divide by whatever's that, so I get one on the right hand side. Does that make sense? So when I do that, the one minus e squared's cancel here. So you just get left with a, x squared on a squared, is that right? And then you get this. And you say, wait a minute, that wasn't what I was supposed to get, right? Because I was expecting something else. Pause. Actually, you should have expected this. Because what do we put into this? We put in all A's and E's. You can't just magically have a B come out of nowhere. It's like, yeah, a wild B squared appeared, right? It's not going to do that because what you input is all A's and E's. That's why that's all in terms of this. But we already know. We already know that this, in fact, should be b squared. So remember how we were trying to get e, right? Well, if you know a and b, there's a relationship between these three values, right? Namely, b squared is equal to a squared times 1 minus b squared. Put a big freaking box around that guy. Okay, that's a huge result. We had to go through a lot of work to get all the way there. But this is the key. Finally made it. This is what's going to unlock the original question. Okay? And if you remember, this was the original question. This is what sent us on this wild goose chase in the first place, right? What am I gonna do with this thing? How how do I how do I interpret this and use this in the light? Yeah, Nikita. So like 16 is a squared. So yeah. a is Yep. Yep. Then you go like 9 equals to um, 4, 1 minus e squared, then you can figure out. Yeah, e. fantastic. Okay. I don't even need to like think, oh, what's the square root of that? It's 4. Because in fact, what I want is a squared to b squared, right? So I'm just going to chuck it in. Watch, right? This is going to be 9 equals 16 times 1 minus e squared. Yep. Then you divide through. 9 on 16 equals <coughs> 1 to take away e squared. What do I do now? I need to I need to subtract one from both sides, right? And then flip it. So uh, so this is going to become negative seven on sixteen, and I've got a double negative on both sides, so I get that. I've just run out of space, but that means that e, which is a ratio, don't forget. So that's why I can ignore the negative solution. E is going to be negative. Uh, sorry, root 7 on 4, right? And I would say that's because e is greater than 0. e is a ratio, yeah? It's a ratio between some numbers. So, that's pretty cool. Notice, by the way, um, two things. Number one, um, this is not a half. Do you remember the first ellipse we did where we chucked in a half and then it, it out popped an ellipse, right? This is not a half. Right? What is root 7 on 4? Like, does it have a value? Yeah. What's the decimal? 0.6 Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's not a half, but it's still an ellipse, right? So 0 0.5 is not the only thing that's going to give us an ellipse. That'll give us an ellipse as well. I wonder what other values would still give me an ellipse. We'll, we'll explore that soon. Um, I can use this. I'm just going to take it now, and I'm going to use it to solve my original equation. I can, at last, right? Because I know where the directrices are. There are plus or minus four on that, right? Directrices are 
x equals plus or minus 4 divided by 4. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's interesting on the bottom. Yep. So I'm going to get that looks to be like plus or minus 16 on root 7. Yeah. Those are the two <coughs> equations that I'm after. Right? Now just double check, right? Um, calculator again. What is 16 on root 7? Just give me the positive one. Obviously the negative one's the same magnitude. What is it? 6.04. 6.04? Go back to your original diagram. You knew where the x-intercepts were. Remember that? Plus or minus 4? Now you've got plus or minus 6.04. Does that look about right? That kind of is in the right neighborhood, isn't it? Just a bit further. Okay. In the same way, I can work out what the foci are. The foci are um, plus or minus AE, comma zero, right? Uh, that's plus or minus uh, A is four, we already said that, times root seven on four. So you get some nice canceling there, that's kind of handy, right? So you're just getting plus or minus root seven, comma zero. Uh, root seven, that's somewhere between root four and root nine, between two and three, so it's like two point something-ish, two point something-ish, which is, again, just do the, do the <coughs> check, right? Oh yeah, that's about there on those two spots on the ellipse. That's where you expect the foci to be. <sighs> All right. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath. Um, you've established a lot. Remember I gave you some sheets earlier, wrong one, this one. I know we took the long way to get there, but that's because we knew nothing about any of these shapes before. We've just done the first question. 1A, yes, okay. Yes. That is what the first that is, that is no. seriously the first question. Uh, yes. Sketch each ellipse and find its foci and directrices. No, 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 but it doesn't say prove no, the... No, that's true. We didn't, have to, we didn't have to go through all of these loops. So remember how I said, put a box around it, right? That's like put a ring on it. Um, this now, you don't need to prove this ever again. Thank goodness, it took us like an hour and a half. Okay. It's a big deal, there's a lot of geometry in there. We can just use this now, right? So if you have a look at 1B, for instance, like this is actually, this over here, this is the whole amount of working. A squared and B squared are sitting there ready for you to evaluate, okay? So you just pop them into here and you'll get a value for the eccentricity. Okay. Once you've done that, it's elementary to find out what the directrices and foci are. Why don't I make either subject? It's a really good question. Two reasons. One of which you will not find out until you make some headway into the exercise. Not because the exercise tells you, but I just want to stop talking and not show you so much theory. The second reason is because, well, actually, like, there's a, how do I say this? Um, like, eccentricity is not always the thing I'm trying to get out of this, right? And sometimes, like, you will find this equation actually changes form when we look at some of these other conics or whatever they are, right? So therefore, this is the most helpful form to distinguish between those. You can write it with e squared as a subject if you like, but I wouldn't encourage it because you'll start to confuse all the different equations with each other. I think it's best to have one. 